Hello, my name is Philip Pullman and I want to say a few words about freedom of expression, freedom of speech and of thought. It shouldn't need defending in this day and age, I would have thought, but perhaps it has needed defending. It has needed standing up for, for most of our life on earth as human beings. Certainly our life here in Europe uh, has been in sore need of it for much of our recorded history. And it's thanks to the courage and the imagination of writers and thinkers that it's been established, freedom of expression I mean, been established as a cornerstone of other kinds of liberty, liberty of religion, freedom of politics. And translators too. I think of such as William Tyndall, who in the 16th century made the first translation into English of the Bible from the original Hebrew and Greek sources and who was burned at the stake for his courage. Carrying words from one mind to another is one of the most important things that human beings can do. Every literary act, whether it's a, a great epic poem, or whether it's an honest piece of journalism, or whether it's a simple nonsense tale for children, is a blow against the forces of stupidity and ignorance and darkness. And we should esteem them and treasure them and defend them all to the same degree. The Palestine Festival of Literature exists to do just that, and I salute it for its work, not only this year, but for as long as it's necessary. I'll read a page now from a book of mine called The Amber Spyglass, and this chapter is called Authority's End, and the authority in question is religious authority. And the figure that we're going to see, and we're going to hear about in this little passage, is a figure who claimed, eons ago, on the very earliest, remotest stretches of time, that he was the creator. The two children, Lyra and Will, have come across uh, a crystal cabinet, a crystal casket, with an ancient, ancient being inside it. Will, said Lyra, Will, look at this. She was gazing into the crystal litter. It was bro unbroken, although the crystal was stained and smeared with mud and the blood from what the cliff ghasts had been eating before they found it. It lay tilted crazily among the rocks and inside it. Oh, Will, he's still alive, but the poor thing. Will saw her hands pressing against the crystal, trying to reach into the angel and comfort him because he was so old and he was terrified, crying like a baby and cowering away into the lowest corner. He must be so old. I've never seen anyone suffering like that. Oh, Will, can't we let him out? Will took his knife and cut through the crystal in one movement and reached in to help the angel out. Demented and powerless, the aged being could only weep and mumble in fear and pain and misery, and he shrank away from what seemed like yet another threat. It's all right, Will said. We can help you hide at least. Come on, we won't hurt you. The shaking hand seized his and feebly held on. The old one was uttering a wordless groaning whimper that went on and on and grinding his teeth and compulsively plucking at himself with his free hand. But as Lyra reached in too to help him out, he tried to smile and to bow and his ancient eyes deep in their wrinkles blinked at her with innocent wonder. Between them, they helped the Ancient of Days out of his crystal cell. It wasn't hard, for he was as light as paper, and he would have followed them anywhere, having no will of his own, and responding to simple kindness like a flower to the sun. But in the open air, there was nothing to stop the wind from damaging him, and to their dismay, his form began to loosen and dissolve. Only a few moments later, he had vanished completely, and their last impression was of those eyes, blinking in wonder, and a sigh of the most profound and exhausted relief. Then he was gone, a mystery dissolving in mystery. <laughs>